picked the wrong weight and quit sniffing glue. Welcome back, everybody. It's week two. Uh, week two on the uh, Colonial Shuttle. Uh, Mark II. So it's week two on Mark II. Um, let's get started with uh, explaining what this little mess is here. Uh, over the weekend, I pulled out the Mobius 172nd scale uh, Vipers that I had in the uh, Cylon Raider. I think they, I believe at one point they did capture a Cylon Raider, so I could use it as that. Um, but these are fun little nuggets of oh goodness, and I've been putting those together, and um, I also wanted to clear up some stuff that I was actually kind of surprised by over the uh, comments from last week's video, and that is that a lot of people think this is the classic uh, Galactica uh, shuttle. It is cl Clearly, it is not. It is from the Ron Moore reboot, and I'm old enough to still call that the remake, even though it's, you know... 10, 12 years old by now, but uh, it's not the 70s uh, uh, classic Galactica, it is the remake. Uh, as for a comparison, here is the classic shuttle. This is from the original series. Uh, yes, they do look a lot alike. They have this wonderful uh, repeated design work here. This was on the classic kit. It was uh, homaged in the uh, remake kit. But and it still has the uh, the weird little dual circle uh, landing gear, which have been also uh, the, the design has been uh, updated for that. And I'm guessing, even though I am more likely than not to believe, this is supposedly 172nd scale as well. But I think it's a little small. I don't think this is quite 172nd scale. The back of the uh, the instructions here have a size comparison of both shuttles and this one looks in comparison to be a little bit smaller than this kit. This was a garage kit. I don't remember who, who originally made it. I remember it being one of the few, one of the first uh, garage kits, uh, resin kits that I built and um, it was it's quite a few years old so uh, I pulled that down from the shelf just to show that yes I know the difference and B there is a difference. Uh, this is the classic shuttle, so we'll move that out of the way. Um, we're about to finish up on this and start with the detail or the decaling on it. I uh, want to go over um, some parts of this now. I noticed this was getting some scratches and scratches in the uh, printing. It wasn't anything that I had done to it. it just no I had noticed that there were some lines showing up. So I puttied over those this weekend, and I've got to uh, sand those down before we're ready to do any uh, um, decaling over that. Uh, Mike uh, had brought up the fact that uh, there was suspicious little or, or, or very little uh, of the typical 3D banding. Oddly enough, it's more noticeable on the engines than it is on the body. Um, however, Keith had printed that in whatever orientation he used. It was very good at disguising the uh, the what I call the wood grain, the the banding lines, but they are more noticeable on the cylinders of the engines. So we're pushing that to the side. I want to finish up these little, uh, like you said, these little cute little nuggets of vipers, and get them ready to go so that we can uh, kind of complete the whole 72nd scale uh, festival here. And these are the 72nd scale uh, land rams that go with the deal. And uh, so we're really nothing to it but to uh, get these to the point where I can uh, start painting those at the same time. Okay, I've got these little guys together and now it's just a question of letting them dry long enough so that I can do some painting on them. They're so cute when they're small. Yeah, nice and wee. Nice and wee vipers. Pop the engines into this one and it'll be done. Hopefully, of course, I can pop it in. Let me see. I can bend out the area that it needs to fit in before. Yeah, I can get that in there. Don't worry. 
Okay, I must admit I'm starting to get a bit lost in the grays, so I'm going to put an end to all of the tuning on this shuttle and uh, go ahead and let what I've got on here dry and then uh, I will be ready for the gloss coat for the decals. There's, I say that uh, I'm done but there's one last thing to do and I think I'm going to do it even after the decals and that is to uh, do the um, the black scoring at the front of the engines and on the back of the uh, exhaust it would make sense that your decals and warnings and signs and all of that kind of stuff would have been put on at the factory and that that engine scorching would happen over top of the decals so that's my that's my logic and all of that once this has uh, dried a bit you'll notice I've got the landing gear covers back on and I've got some details picked out of the bottom but once all of that has had a chance to dry and unfortunately it has been raining off and on all day today so I don't know what the chances are getting this on the back porch long enough to get the clear coats on it so I've been kind of dancing around that delicate subject meanwhile working on the uh, the tiny vipers the hold me closer tiny vipers uh, and the tiny raider that goes with the tiny vipers and uh, playing around with a bit of that while I'm waiting for I, I I don't even know if I hope if I have the hope of the Sun coming out but if I can just get it to dry up that would be a, a, a gracious plenty so that's where we're kind of at we're kind of on hold with some of this stuff so I figured I'd throw it all on one to the all into the same uh, the same picture there so you can see where we're kind of sitting well the good news is it caught enough of enough of a break in the rain that I was able to get a coat of gloss on the uh, the uh, shuttle so that I can uh, start decaling probably tomorrow shouldn't take much of the much of the day but uh, I want to give the gloss a chance to dry still I need still might need to hit the bottom uh, I think there's some decals that go on the bottom side so I want to uh, uh, give it a few more minutes and then take it back outside and flip it over and spray the bottom got these little guys knocked out today they're ready for uh, decals and paint I bet you they probably could stand to be glossed as well so the decals will, will fit or will lay down nicely got pilots to paint painting pilots I uh, thought I was done with that when I finished the uh, the shuttle um, worked on the land ramps put some rust and some grime on them tried to liven them up a little bit did the silver accenting around the headlights so that the those stand out from the body a bit and I'll bet you I need to gloss these too because they get big old numbered decals on the roofs so I should probably uh, when I do the bottom of this I should probably pull these out and uh, at least hit the top where the big decals go I can pull out the accessories here but get these guys ready for decaling as well come back it is Tuesday and it's decal day and decal day means one thing it means we're close to being finished uh, I will uh, confess to being having been in a bit of a funk yesterday since it was a carp what I call a carpenter's day it was both a rainy day and a Monday and that guy that kind of got me down but today I am back with renewed vim and vigor and I am getting ready to put the decals down on the Colonial Shuttle Mach 2 and uh, had this wonderful sheet these are the these are the uh, decals for the outside having put the decals for the inside on the inside so now it's a matter of getting the paper towel and the bowl of warm water and all the other accoutrement ready I uh, have got most everything else cleaned off the table that I have not that I have no need of today I have got the um, smaller vehicles the two tiny vipers and the land rams are sitting uh, having had their coat of uh, gloss uh, clear on them they are drying now so I can um, do by the time I get to these by the time I get these done those will be ready to go on so uh, I'm just uh, getting my 
workplace set up and cleaned up and like I said all the stuff that I don't need get it out of the way because um, it just clutters up the workspace if you don't need it and uh, we'll get ready to go now I know everybody wants to see the the big sexy uh, red pennants going on on the top of the uh, ship here that's these guys but uh, it makes more sense to put the bottom decals on first because I can put those on and then flip the whole thing over and do the top whereas if I did the top first and then flipped it over well then they'd be sitting on the uh, it basically would be sitting on the decals and uh, that's no bueno uh, sitting on the on the uh, landing gear makes much more sense plus there's only a scant few of these that go on the belly although I think I'm going to use uh, I had some red uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I had some uh, Yes, I left that in on purpose. Um, some of these caution stripes that are black and yellow that I had left over from the inside. I think it might make sense to put one something around the outsides of the uh, of both of the hatches, so the both big ramps. For some reason, the back ramp isn't getting any love here. There's a, lots of cautions around the front, but no cautions around the back. So. Uh, I think I might add some just something to dress that area up starting to put the belly decals on now and one thing I've noticed it's a bit of a, a variation from the actual uh, design of the kit for, or from the kit from the renders here you'll notice that these renders show the uh, front of the engines having a much more of a slope uh, much more of an angle here um, but the, on the actual kit they are flatter so rather than continuing to put these uh, triangle decals on at an angle, I've just decided to keep them in line with the front of the try to get that the front of the uh, intake there rather than angling them since the intakes are squarer. I decided to square off the decals as well. I don't know um, what the thinking is with that, but uh, that's what I have decided to do. It looks like the uh, um, it looks like the the kit has a slightly different design of the engine fronts than the uh, CG render does. Okay, so I just added some of these triangles that uh, there's there's a set of triangles that go around the front uh, up at the front uh, ramp. I just put another set at the back ramp because, well, I blame Keith. He gave me too many. No, there, there are extras. There are plenty of decals. One thing I will uh, gush about on the uh, decals for these sheets, not only are they very well done, very well printed, very good registration on them, um, very good material, no, no folding, no tearing, no cracking, but you know the 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 uh, added benefit of having extras something that most model companies could stand to learn from if you've got extra room on your paper i mean you're printing a decal sheet that is this big or bigger i mean I, obviously i have cut this decal sheet down why in the name of all of this good and holy is there empty space on a decal sheet uh, it's so it's going to cost you a micro micro cent of extra ink I mean the printing the setup is your expensive charge making the printing plates or the screens is your expensive charge uh, fill it for God's sake fill it fill it with decals fill it with decals the modeler may never need but could use on another kit that's just good karma even if you don't need it on your particular model. Um, there is empty space. It should be... Now, the flip side of that, and of course you knew a flip side was coming, don't put them so close together that you can't cut them apart. That's just ridiculous. Uh, there should be room to be able to you know, navigate your scissors in between them. But for heaven's sakes, if you've got empty space on a decal sheet, you're just wasting, uh, wasting space. So... Uh, Yay on Keith for for uh, including extras. So I've got all the decals that I need to put on the bottom. So I can flip this guy over 
and get ready to do the ones that go on the sides and the tops. Um, we're going to let this, we're just going to sit this back down on its landing gear and we're going to let it dry. The one's on the bottom obviously. And uh, there is decals that go all the way around these engines. That is something that I could be doing now. There's some side work. Things that go on the sides and then things that go on the top. But I am itching. I am itching to get this big guy on here. So I think we're going to do that next. Well, that's just lovely. Um, the nice thing about having this big old panel line right here is it gives you something to line this decal up with. And then you just keep a nice margin uh, from the bottom of the uh, stripe to the bottom seam here, or the, 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 uh, the, the edge, this edge right here. You can keep a nice parallel line. Plus, you've got these breaks in it where the uh, where these other big uh, panel lines are. So yeah, it's it makes it very uh, very much a no-brainer when it comes to the placement of that decal. Lovely, lovely. Um, I'm going to continue over the top now before I go into the other side. Okay, she's a fully striped. I uh, still have the yellow over the windows because. I uh, have yet to put the final flat coat on it, but uh, and I'm going to protect everybody that's inside from getting any overspray of clear on them. So that is why that yellow is there, but everybody is striped. Uh, the stripe is on this side. Most importantly, they line up front to the front to front on both stripes. Um, got the stri got all of the markings and all the warnings in the on the engine intakes. Might even be a little bit of overkill. I don't know. The decals are quite noticeable. Uh, I'm wondering at this scale, these would be about oh, uh, eight inch, eight inch letters or something on there. I don't know. Um, awfully big, but I like it. And uh, we're ready for this to dry, and then a flat coat, and then after the flat coat. Uh, we will do the final black scorching around the intakes and the exhausts of the engines. And then I think the final thing will be to glue in this ramp that I have uh, never glued in yet. But we're at a great spot for letting things dry. Boy, you want to know what's more nerve-wracking than cutting out tiny decals? Cutting out tiny white decals. Man, that makes the eyes go buggy trying to figure it all out. Um, I'm moving on to the land rams. Doing a little decal work on the land rams now. Still waiting for the uh, the big shuttle to dry. I have just a, a, a handful of uh, decals left to put on that. But I've kind of moved over to these other ones. And these white decals, i got to tell you, they are... A bugging on the eyes but they do look good when they're down now these will get the flat coat after it's done so don't mind the glossiness um, kind of dreading all of the uh, stripage that needs to go on this uh, it was fun enough at full scale but at 170 second scale look at this by the way look at this this is one of these uh, uh, accessory bits from Keith Cosmic scale models, but look at that right down to the grill work in Let's see if I can right down to the grill work in the steps themselves That is one piece that is some delicate printing there and you'll see just how perfectly it matches up to the side of the uh, Viper and there's one here for the uh, the other style of Viper as well but uh, uh, yeah, just going around and uh, putting decals down where I can and then letting them dry. And Alrighty, I have, uh, I'm cleaning up all the little million, million specks of little blue paper. Because I, uh, you know, when you're snipping out decals and you're cutting off the excess and then you're throwing away the backing paper and all that, you can get into quite a blizzard of little bits of blue paper. So I'm cleaning all of that up now. Letting the... Letting the uh, shuttle dry, letting the land rams dry, I've got 
the Viper, I guess this is the Mark V Viper. I've got this Viper ready to go. I'm not quite sure on my marks. Um, I have to do the black scorching on this. I haven't done that yet. I will do that with all of these at the same time. So this is going to dry. I'm going to flat coat that with a, uh, with a flat coat. This is ready for flat coat. That's ready for flat coat. The land rams are ready for flat coat. This Viper is not. I have to put all of the uh, decals on that. I have got a, a primer coat on a lot of the accessories. Those I'll be painting up yet. Um, things going along pretty well for a Tuesday. So uh, we're just going to uh, close up for today and pick this up again tomorrow when we'll be ready to put the flat coat on that. Good morning everybody. Welcome back. It is Wednesday and uh, I have just brought the uh, shuttle back in from the out of doors where it was resting after having been coated with a uh, flat clear coat top and bottom which made all of the all of the film around the decals disappear making them look like wonderfully painted on markings. Uh, there are only two things left to do and then we will be done with this kit. Uh, first thing is to do some gentle black uh, scorching. Get the uh, the old flat black Tamiya out on a fine airbrush tip and do the uh, just the intakes here. A little scorching around them, a little scorching around the exhaust at the back and uh, then the last thing will be to glue the uh, ramp on. Now for some strange reason, and I don't know why, which makes it a strange reason, the uh, design does not call for any sort of piston or bar or any type of pole that goes, you know, to the edges of the uh, ramp to hoist it up or down. It simply has one big hinge along the back. I don't know how practical that would be in reality, but it's a made up thing, so we don't question things like that too much. But it does mean I do need to put a, a fine bead of glue there and just pop that in place. Uh, the more I work with this, the more I regret not lighting it, but I stick with my original assessment in that I've got plenty of other things to, to, to light. So, uh, and if you shine a flashlight in there, you do get to see the detail. A lot of what's happening inside there is in the inky void, but um, uh, that is also a testament to how good the uh, light blocking worked, because you don't see any cracks in it at all. So, and I mean, you know, 99% of the time it's going to be displayed like this with some uh, support vehicles around it, and uh, therefore, you know, lighting is lighting. Okay, we're ready to start knocking things off of a list of completed things. Um, I just need to do one last trick. I've got the black sprayed on the exhaust and on the uh, intakes here on the front just to darken those up a bit. And the last thing I need to do is to attach this ramp. Um, I'm just going to take a bead of glue across the top, put it in place, let it sit. But uh, I think what I need to do is to take a, uh, a bead of the UV glue, I'm guessing. I don't know. I think the UV glue might be the best thing because I can put a little dollop of it along that edge, put everything in place, and then hit it with the light. It will be better than trying to do it with a CA because, as I've said before, CA, you know, once you put it on there, it's already got a, a ticking clock on it, and you kind of have to be in ready to go. So I'm wondering, I'm wondering now, if I can do this, put that in place, and then um, hit it with the C, uh, hit it with the light, is that going to be enough to tack it to where I can move it to its final resting place and let it, uh, let it fully cure from there? Hmm. I'll let you know what I decide. Okay, surprisingly strong. Uh, I was able to pick it right up. And uh, I'm not going to say that you can do it, use this as a diving board, but it is amazingly uh, held in place. Now, the only problem with it is I put a, a nice bead of it out here and uh, it's set up with a uh, gloss finish. 
and I want to cover it over with a little bit of the matte varnish here to uh, get that flat uh, finish back. So I've got a clean brush and some uh, matte finish that I'm just going to squirt straight into here. And then spread it out a little bit. And it's in the least conspicuous place ever because unless you pick up this kit and look at the underside of this you're never going to see that particular joint but I am going to bring this finish all the way out to the edge of these panel lines so that if you do see it the difference in finish will look intentional Just get a little bit off of it off of there which is also a neat trick if you want to uh, make some of your paneling stand out you could just brush this uh, flat finish or a satin finish over one or you know a plate or a plate next to it and it would give you the uh, give you the illusion of it has maybe been replaced or cleaned or something that looks that makes it look different than what's in than what is right next to it but there you go and let that dry and we are going to sit this and there it is with the uh, ramp resting on the ground and uh, the little land rams have been also finished and uh, the decals for them went on just as nicely although because they are such a big area uh, I could have stood another gloss coating before I put these decals down. I am getting a bit of a ghost behind the decal. And I uh, think it's because it went, didn't go down on an absolutely uh, smooth glossy surface. And therefore it trapped some air and we got some silvering of the decal itself. Which uh, shouldn't be. And now I'm wondering if I've got enough spare decals that I could spare I could stand to uh, scrape that off and redo it but maybe not so I've got the uh, this one is the one that gets the big old snow shovel on the front of it to be fair it could be a dirt shovel as well that's just my uh, my uh, history with plows like that you are usually that they are used for uh, snow but see now we have the uh, land ram coming down the ramp we can start staging this as some sort of uh, either maintenance bay or or um, landing party although much of what happened on Galactica was never a party but you know what I mean I need to paint up these little pilots I've also done the uh, the scorching on their thrusters on this uh, Viper Mark II no, I'm sorry, the, Vi the, Mar the Viper Mark II is this one. And i got to tell you, the decals for this did not age nearly as well. Um, of course, they're wrapping around all of these shapes, and uh, they're old to begin with. So uh, I will be painting up a lot of scoring and damage on that to cover up uh, mis missing or ripped or uh, cracked decals. Okay, so I've been painting all of these accessories, getting the silvers and the blacks and the uh, NATO blacks and the grays and the, oh no, that's not Craftsman Red at all, uh, red on here. I'm using the uh, suggested colors from the fronts of the illustrations here. And if you're fooling, if anybody's being fooled by the fact that these aren't Craftsmen, I don't know who that person would be. But this is reminding me more like painting D&D &D miniatures than it is anything else because of how tiny and wee and small and minuscule they are and uh, it's uh, a lot more taxing than spraying something really huge with an airbrush you just have to go in with a, a two-haired brush and kind of just paint your details in and it's uh, a little bit nerve-wracking morning everybody it's Thursday it's the gateway to the weekend 
and uh, we are continuing work on the tiny tiny details uh, using up all of these Cosmic Scale Models Viper Bay accessories I gotta tell you if uh, you are thinking of making a landing bay diorama these are the bees knees these are the cats pajamas these are uh, mighty nice things I wish I had room is, is, is where I'm coming down to it though uh, to make up a nice diorama you could really go full full metal model railroad jacket on this if you wanted to make a diorama of the entire launch bay you get yourself you know six or eight of these guys um, some tiny vipers and you uh, populate it with all these accessories you could really go to town on this uh, I mean right down to the decals on the containers in the room uh, the uh, labels on the barrels on the forklifts for heaven's sakes could use more people though I, one thing I did notice is that there is a lack of people uh, you know the, the orange jumpsuit guys the chief terrells the uh, the working joes you know the, the working stiffs that were here that you know I'm sure Keith has got those in the works and they're probably an, another a set of accessories to do that but uh, that's all that's missing I mean swear I swear some of these things it looks like you could start them up and drive away on them they are just that accurate the uh, I mean right down to the the drawer fronts on the toolboxes I mean I'm expecting to see a you know boomer loves Tyrrell scratched into the side of one of these desks that's how much detail is on is is available here and the 3d printing of these is just magnificent i mean look at the uh the level of detail that would have had to have been done with photo etch in the old days it's just a, an amazing amount of detail i know i keep harping on the uh uh the gantries here but uh some of these other details are just magnificent this is all all one piece no building uh, required there but uh, and it fits up perfectly next to the side of the Viper so we're gonna finish this off I don't know how I'm gonna end up displaying this is the uh, is the big question you know I'll probably make just like a little three cornered alcove I know that uh, Keith makes walls he makes the the weird slanted walls of the side of the Viper bays and uh, you know, if you really want to go full a uh, whole hog or the entire swine, as we used to say, if you want to go whole hog on that, Keith will set you up. But for my purposes, I think I'll just make some sort of little, maybe three walled and a floor slat thing to kind of make a, a make a uh, an office for one of these. I don't know for ex exactly how I'm going to accomplish it. But for today, I'm going to finish putting the detail of the decals on all of these and to finish the last remaining decals that go on the Viper here and uh, then do the last bit of weathering on the Viper. So that's where we're going to pick it up. So join me in the uh, land of the giants here. Okay, so I've got all the million tiny decals on the Viper. If I ever volunteer for a job like this again, just shoot me now. Uh... That's an awful lot of tiny, tiny decals. And for the little thrusters and all the little markings. I mean, it's amazing that you can still read the names of the type. is is so printed so clear. And if this is the wrong number for Starbucks Viper, I don't care. I What I did is I just cut the, uh, the top row off. And I trusted that the numbers and the names lined up. So, uh, neener, neener. I remember a scene... Because I remember when I was uh, making the larger version, I think the 32nd scale, I'm not sure. The larger version, the original kit of this Viper. And I was checking what number to use and where all the details went and all of that. And I remember seeing an instance, and I cannot remember the name of the episode right now, where uh, Starbucks Viper changed numbers in mid-scene. Um, they were going from the live action set to the um they were they were fading from the live action set to the cg and while starbuck is passing in front of her viper the number on the tail fin changed 
while it was happening. So uh, consistency is uh, the hobgoblin of a tiny mind. Uh, I am going to uh, take that as done and let all of these decals dry and then I'll be ready to do the, the final flat coating on that. So now I'm digging out the uh, the decals that Keith has provided for his sets and the problem difference between these and those is that these are all carrier film and all have to be trimmed out whereas the Mobius decals um, have regular decal carrier film on them and uh, you can sink the whole sheet in and all the decals will have you know come out nice and trimmed these are not not so lucky with these so uh, I gotta be more careful with trimming those out well I'm beat I just got back from mowing the backyard huh. uh, but the good news is all of these decals have had plenty of time to set so I'm gonna spray the Viper with some flat coat and then I can get into distressing it in all these areas where the decals cracked and broke I am going to either paint over them again with red paint or I am going to uh, smudge that up and, and peel it up with uh, battle damage good morning everybody it's Friday it's the last work day of the week and it is the last day on this build and uh, we're going to kind of put everything together. We've got one last job ahead of us, and that is the weathering of uh, the wee tiny viper. And then once that has been accomplished, uh, we can kind of put the whole Megillah together, the whole enchilada, the whole taco, the whole Mexican food of your choice, and uh, see how it all looks on scene and uh, go from there. Okay, a little bit of scorching later, and we have a finished tiny, tiny viper. Uh, actually, you know what? No. Uh, there's one more pass I want to do, and that is just a little bit of the uh, metallic chrome. Well, hard to find a chrome that isn't metallic. Uh, just a little bit of the highlight dry brushing weathering pass. I need to do some of that on these. Ooh, that's too much. That's too much. Gotta wipe that off. Sorry, I should be doing that in camera. This is the wrong brush for that, but I'm just to bring out some highlights on the guns. Maybe just a little bit on the tips of the wings there to show some Again, be nice if it was on camera. Just a little bit on the leading edge of the uh, turbine intakes there. Some on the uh, top wing, just where the paint would be knocked all the way off. A little bit on there. At the very heart of the scorches, I put a little bit in there to show that maybe it took the paint off down to the uh, down to the metal. A little bit on here on the top wing. Some highlights here. Oh well, yeah, I like that a lot better. Just a little bit of dry brushing. Sorry, I sounded like Bob Ross there. Didn't mean to. Just a little, just a little bit of happy, just a little happy highlight here and there. And uh, the more your paint gets worn off of your brush, the better it actually works for dry brushing. See, just taking a bit off of there hit the uh, landing gear struts a little bit try to bring out some detail there yeah that'll, that'll do that'll do pig a little bit off of the in trying to do this on camera 
just a little bit on the nose. It, it involves me uh, holding the Viper, holding the between the camera and me, or holding the camera between me and the Viper. Yeah, there we go. See, this is what I was talking about taking care of where the decal kind of flaked off. Bring out some of that side detail here. And one last pass in through here. Yeah, just a little bit of metal exposed damage here. Bring out some little dry brushing to bring out some detail. There, I think that, oh, forgot the one on this side. Did the one on the other side, forgot the one on this side. Yeah, bring out some detail here. Some detail back in there. little bit of highlighting there yeah bring out some detail back there as well Okay, I think we are, I think we're good. We're done with that one. I wanted to do a little bit, one pass of the uh, highlight on these barrels because uh, I was noticing that they could stand to use a little bit of dimension. So I'm just chroming up the tops of these barrels. Make them look a little more used. Now, because of the way they were printed, the backs of them are really nasty, so those would go up against the wall or the back wall of whatever little uh, launch bay garage you were making. I just want to put some on just the, uh, the highest spot to accentuate that. And I think that about does it. I think we are ready to bring all of the pieces together and show how they would fill out an entire launch bay if that's the diorama you had in mind. I really like these these ladders. I, I have to check the site, but uh, I hope that uh, Keith makes these in full scale to go with the much larger models. Those would be a great accessory. To have but by the time you take and again I'm off camera by the time you take the uh, put the barrels here you've got the tug which in the real world would uh, be one of these deals where you are pulling an unmanned ship behind you and you're just like pushing it in or pulling it into a a garage bay or to moving it around without a pilot in it I gotta tell you though, Keith, the one thing I have noticed is that this is a little short here. This needs to be longer because by the time you put put that around the uh, um, landing gear, you've got no room for your for your uh, um, operator here without getting a big, you know, viper stuck in his back. And it's the same for both. 
you would need to have room for the for the operator to stand there. So making these making this just a smidge longer um, would uh, would solve that problem. But uh, here you go. Let's move the the ladders back in place. There we have the tug toolbox. Um, this thing with the platform on the top. Uh, I well, I'll show you. I use that. I, I think it works better with the land ramps. But uh, here we've got a movable uh, forklift, work desk, uh, some fuel tanks. Uh, another. This will be like an engine hoist or a hoist that you would uh, put a uh, either a gun or a heavy piece of equipment or something you need to lift up. Uh, we have a diagnostic computer station here couple of fuel tanks or, or uh, hydraulic tanks or whether it's fuel or some other uh, combustible liquid but yeah you got the whole setup here for your lunch bay uh, good diorama goodness okay so this is a very basic and remedial setup just to show how the various accessory kits and uh, ships and vehicles that can interact with each other. Uh, here you can see the the uh, Viper being towed it's, or getting or just being released from the tow with the uh, ramp moved up to it. Some land rams uh, again with a little maintenance ladder up to the back of it. The, the Viper Mark II, the, the uh, land ram coming out of the shuttle now this has not got any of the markings or, or features of the actual landing bay. I just checked a quick quick check of uh, Cosmic Scale Models website and I'm happy to report that a full 172nd uh, scale uh, launch bay is on the coming soon page. Uh, let me show you what that looks like on the computer here. Okay, here is, let me zoom in on that. If you really want to go whole hog, you can do the, use this set that includes sidewalls and the dividers between the sidewalls. You would park your little vipers in between those. The industrious person out there would buy two sets of this so that you would have them mirrored and uh, that would give you both walls and you could stack them as long as you wanted to make your Battlestar uh, launch bay, you could uh, one if you were of a mind to could build the entire Galactica out of see there you go out of uh, 172nd scale parts here. Just show you some of the details that Keith Scott cooked up for this. Some more of those beautiful ladders, detailing down onto the feet, and. Uh, of course the decals for the floor and things like that floor you'd have to make yourself I guess you'd have to get yourself a nice flat piece of, of uh, sheet stock and make your own floor but good heavens that's not so much to ask but yeah if you really want to go all out this is the way to do it and there you go one last pass at the uh, collected bits here and even put the now the Cylon ship there I have to tell you the Cylon ship and the two Vipers are not from Cosmic Scale models those are the Mobius kits and you can still find them I don't know that they're being made anymore but you can still find them online in the 172nd scale and of course I've got the uh, the engine hoist because I think it looks the red the red uh, accessories look good against the uh, the Cylon ship there. But there's the star of the show, the uh, Colonial shuttle. And if you look carefully enough, you can see the tiny detail of the. Come on. There you go, of the crew inside and the officers inside. Let me 
you can look all the way through. And my friends, that's where we're going to be finished with this quick little two-week build on the Colonial Shuttle Mark II. And what a beauty it is. A joy to behold and a thing of beauty forever. Now it looks kind of, looks kind of, uh, oh, with the mouth open like that, it almost looked like the Salvage One from Court, or no. Uh, salvage One was Salvage One. I'm trying to think of the ship from Quark with the mouth hanging open like that. It, I just got that that look just from uh, seeing the, the eyes and the mouth open, but there you go, you look straight down the gullet. Um, this is a, a, a beautiful, beautiful kit. Uh, not what I've done to it, notwithstanding. Um, the 3D model has come of age, and this is it. Um, you can get everything out of this model that you would get out of a uh, styrene kit. This is, I mean, the parts fit together like a dream. The level of detail approaches what you can only used to get in a resin kit, uh, and I mean a resin cast kit. Uh, and here it is. The level of detail presented by the 3D printing is astounding. Um, if I had any, if I had any uh, compunction to make an improvement, and it's a strictly my own sense. I would break it into yet more parts. That's just me. Uh, modeling is part of the fun of modeling is putting a bunch of parts together. These engines could have easily been subdivided into more parts and still printed, still be fine. Uh, but you know, then the modeler gets the joy of putting the pieces together. This is uh, suitable for lighting. I did not light it. I wish I had. I know. Um, now, now you tell me. But having coming off of coming off of a lighting project and getting ready to go to another lighting project, um, this was a nice respite to not have to worry about lighting. But you certainly could light it. I would recommend lighting it because not only do you see the detail in the cabin better, but the detail down in the uh, uh, cargo bay would have been much better had it been lit. Uh, there are channels in the engines, uh, wiring channels already baked in. There is, on this foot, foot here, there's a hole baked in to where if you wanted to run your power down through this one landing gear and out to a base, you could have done it. So uh, Keith has thought of everything on this. It just, by the luck of it, fell into my schedule where uh, I was not going to light this kit. And now, if I had a regret, it would be that I did not try to light it. But uh, a, a beautiful, beautifully well rendered and well um, uh, realized kit um, from certainly somebody I would consider a leader in the, uh, in the arena of 3D printed models. There are plenty of people who provide 3D printed models that don't necessarily think of the modeler when they're doing it. Uh, yes, because you can print the whole thing as one kit, as one piece, doesn't mean you should. Uh, you got to give room for the modeler to go in and do stuff. And I think uh, Keith is well on that road to uh, to doing that. Um, if you've got the if you've got the coins, I highly recommend getting this kit. It's a uh, it's a fun little thing. It's enough of a it's enough of an unknown. Like a, yeah, it was in a show. It was in a couple of episodes, but you could still have fun customizing this the way you want to do it. You're not locked into cannon and, oh, 130 hours of this ship and everybody knows where every bolt and every screw goes. So uh, you really could have some fun making this your own. Um, and that's all I really have to say about that. Uh, the accessories. Again, Keith, if you're not making this for the full-sized kit, Please consider doing that. That's a beautiful. That ladder is a beautiful bit of kit right there, um, and that's it. That's I'm, I'm rambling. I'm sorry. Uh, that's it for today. That's it for this model. Join us next time, where we'll be going to be tackling a big lighted model project, and it's going to take oh a few weeks, a few weeks uh, if I don't get lost first. Uh, so until next week, when we're building something new, be good. Be good to each other. Watch out for the Cylons. They're everywhere. And uh, we'll talk to you next time.